Well, if you want to influence people, you have to make some sort of empathetic connection with them. Bjorn Lomberg, the author of Cool It, knows that, and he's very, very good at it. He also knows that if he talks common sense, he'll get his point across. For example, if you ask a poor mother struggling to survive if she wants this week's food, or to go without, for global warming's sake, she'll pick the food. If you talk about people not wanting to give up their cars and air travel and heated houses, not wanting to cut emissions, then we will all agree with him. If you tell a room of environmentalists you're on their side, that you believe that we do cause global warming, uh, and that you're for sustainable energy solutions, you would think that we would also agree with him. But last night at the RSA, the debate chaired by the Duke of Edinburgh, two people stormed out without even a backward glance at the Prince. Why? Because of this. Because he does believe that global warming is a problem we've created, but it is not that much of an issue, he says. Well, this is probably worse than declaring himself a full-out global warming sceptic. It's a bit like damning with faint praise, or the wolf dressed up in sheep's clothing. He rubs people up the wrong way when he suggests that they are being manipulated and duped into a massive great con because of wanting to look good. Um, there could be some positive spin to our warming planet, he says, and we all know that. There could be less deaths, for example, from the cold. And there's even some common sense in his vision that if people do want to do the right thing by humanity, uh, make themselves look good or help people, there are other ways of doing it. Concerned about malaria, for example, we could pay for more drugs. Or if we are worried about people dying from the heat in cities, then we could install air conditioning. But of course, that means increasing carbon emissions, which gets us back to the central debate. <laughs> and maybe he's right there and that we are a little bit too obsessed with this one panacea, Cut carbon emissions, save the planet. However, it is at this point that where he becomes a little offensive by suggesting that all our efforts on carbon reduction are completely futile and that public relations movements like Kyoto are hypocritical and are costly gestures. The problem is that amidst the good and the bad suggestions, um, there is, I believe, an avoidance of one central issue, and that is that global warming is a bit more complex than just a marketing campaign and picking that marketing campaign apart. That empathising with people's immediate concerns will only work so far, and that is the problem. The problem is that none of us, none of us can accurately foretell the tipping point. Uh, when we are greed, maybe for natural resources, drives us just at that little bit too far. And also the other point that maybe if it hadn't been for these dramatic scenarios, possibly a little overdone, uh, that we've used, we would not have begun the good trend of environmental concern that is genuinely underway. Today, people the world over are more aware that we need these different energy sources. We are aware that our rainforests are precious that our coral reefs are being poisoned and that sea levels will rise as glaciers melt. And whatever our personal preferences we, we hold for helping out those most in need, it should not veer from our focus on stemming climate change for the sake of stemming climate change. But hopefully, like the RSA debate yesterday, we can continue discussing all the options with an open mind uh, and an optimistic attitude and from any direction uh, that people are coming from. This is Louise Burfitt-Dons for the Global Warming Hotspot for the Global Warming Alliance.